Okay. Now we come to an important point of justifying the, the Coulomb Born approximation, sorry, justifying why we were entitled to carry out such an approximation. That is, under the integral sign, we replaced the full wave function with the plane wave, as if it is next to the lowest effect. The lowest effect is it goes through untouched, and the next time that uh, plane wave is substituted and it gives you the correct physical amplitude. Okay. <clears throat> Perhaps I should do it there. It's a very subtle criterion. That's the reason why I have to really go rather slowly at this point. And there are some constants, and it gives you the f. We said to lowest, next to lowest order. And the lowest order is no scattering. So we would like to see the scattering, but the weakest effect to uh, deviate the object. We replaced here this one by the plane wave. Where are we doing this? At what regime we are doing this? Are we doing it up at the detector or at the center? We are doing it at the center in the integral, under the integral sign, where the V is effective. V is localized. So this replacement to get the Born approximation is carried out around the origin. If it is done around the origin, so we are not really focusing at large distances, we are focusing about the origin. What is the equation then? The equation then is sine plus of x is equal to phi k of x minus 2m over h bar squared 1 over 4 pi d cube x prime e to the i k x minus x prime divided by x minus x prime v of x prime psi plus of x prime. And you notice that I have gone back to the exact equation before the approximation. Why? Because the approximation involved detector being at very far distances. Shall I stop for a while? And so the, the detector being at very far distances, the potential is localized at the nuclear sizes. But if I have to carry out this approximation by replacing this one in the potential region, then I have to look at the full, full equation, exact equation. The approximate equation is not good for that. I want you to really appreciate this. Try to understand this statement. Then, so about the origin, I have to look at this equation about x0. So what do I have then? Psi of x minus psi k of x around x equals 0 is 
2m over h bar squared, 1 over 4 pi, d cube x prime. Now, whenever I see x, I set it equal to 0, going to neglecting next to x prime. There, originally, I was neglecting x prime as compared to x. Now, I am neglecting x as compared to x prime. e to the i k r prime now. Or if you want, I can write it as such to make you feel comfortable that it is the x which is neglected when compared to x prime. And this one is x prime. V of x prime. Now I really replace this with k of x prime. OK. That is, then this is approximated to be 0. Because exact equations, this minus that is equal to that. I say around the x prime equals 0, I can replace the full side with the plane wave. Therefore, it means around the taking the difference, and I am replacing this difference with the 0, and I am replacing psi with the phi. It is the, I am doing the same operation in both sides. OK. So let me write this as follows. Meaning, if I express it as a mathematical statement, meaning 2m over h bar squared, 1 over 4 pi, the magnitude of d cube x prime e to the i k r prime divided by r prime v of x prime. Now think of the spherical symmetric case. V of r, r prime times phi k. So it is e to the i k x prime divided by 2 pi to the 3 halves. Yes. Mathematicians try to put a limit, right? This must be very small as compared to 1, meaning 0 gets very close to 0. So this is the condition. If I take them out, this one as well. So 2m over h bar squared, 2 pi to the minus 3 halves divided by 4 pi, now, uh, again, take the dummy integration variable in such a way that, for instance, it is, uh, no, let, let me not do anything. Just carry out the phi integration only because nothing depends on phi. Scattering is a problem in which momentum is conserved. All the physical processes, momentum is conserved, right? K is equal to K prime. So it takes place in a plane. It takes place in a plane, meaning that this azimuthal angles always disappear. So you can carry out the integration and get the 2 pi in here. dr prime. There is an r prime squared which kills one of them, so it becomes r prime. So e to the i k r prime plus i k. Yes, indeed so. I k r prime cosine theta prime cosine theta prime. Okay. Instead of using a shortcut, I will write it as follows. I k r prime d cosine theta prime e to the i k r prime cosine theta prime. This is much more clean. Okay, So I have put everything in proper order. This should be very much less than 1. Okay. 
some cancellations in here. So what is it? There is 4 pi squared, etc. 2m, 2, 2m over h bar squared, 2m over h bar squared, 2 pi to the minus 3 minus. It is this thing. And in order to finish this expression, I, uh, do, what do I need? I need the explicit form of the V. Let's do it for the Yukawa. We said we, we carry out the, we found the amplitude for the Yukawa. Therefore, I have to carry out the, all these integrations for the Yukawa. Let's take V as V0 over mu e to the minus e to the minus mu r divided by r. Okay. Okay, what do I have then? So, m over h bar squared, v0 over mu, 2 pi to the minus 3 halves. There is v, v0, v0 over mu k will come from there. And there is an r prime in the denominator which cancels against that. So the magnitude dr prime 0 to infinity e to the, e to the e minus mu r prime plus i k r prime times 1 over, let's carry out this integration, 1 over i k r prime e to the i k r prime minus e to the minus i k r prime. That's the expression. The k comes out. So m h bar squared k v0 over mu 2 pi to the minus 3 halves, 0 to infinity dr prime, 1 over r prime, or e to the minus mu r prime divided by 1 over r prime. This enters in here, makes it 1 minus, no, actually it doesn't make 1 minus, it makes twice i k r prime minus 1. The sign is correct this way. So that's the integral. How do I carry out this integral? This integral is not that easy. I will invite you to think on your own a little bit and we'll try to give you the result. Okay, <clears throat> perhaps the crucial point in here is the following. <clears throat> you see, it's, it's quite a complicated integral for, for obvious reasons. In order to do this, we have to distinguish. What we have to do is impose that this condition is satisfied. And finding this result, obviously, it's going to put some constraint on the value of the k, on the value of the V0. V0 is the strength of the potential. If it is too strong or too weak, and whether K, the momentum, therefore it's related to the energy, right? The energy is H bar squared, K squared divided by 2M. Depending on the value, whether K is low, high or low, then this integral can be satisfied or not. So we have to look at, for instance, the low energy limit first. Low energy. This is the special, a very special regime that I look at. If the energy is low, it's such a way that I can approximate this 
as 1 plus 2i kr prime, you have to be, of course, careful. When r is also small, that's okay. When k is small, but if r becomes at the upper end of the integral, whether it becomes large enough to kill this, so you have to really keep the k very low. You can estimate the amount of energy. If so, then this difference can be approximated by 2i kr prime minus 1 is 2i kr prime. Then this r prime cancels against that r prime. So what is this integral then? The numbers times 2k, which is coming out of here, 2k, and the integral dr prime integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus mu r prime, right? If you want. And that k, of course, coming and killing this k in here. But anyway, let's proceed without worrying about this. What is this integral? We are going to take the magnitude, therefore the sign mistakes are tolerable. There is 1 over mu e to the minus mu r integral at 0 and zero, uh, at infinity and 0. The upper limit gives you 0 because it's it, thanks to the minus sign and lower limit is minus 1 and so it's 1 over mu a minus sign anyway. So altogether what does this mean? Perhaps I have to write it cleanly to the right in here. First of all, there is a 2k and one of the k's go away, so it is 2m over h bar squared, v0 over mu, 2 pi to the minus 3 halves, times 1 over mu, so mu squared is less than 1. How do I write this? I can write this as v0 is less than h bar squared mu squared divided by 2 mu and times the 2 pi to the 3 halves. Notice this. h bar squared mu squared divided by 2m. So it's at the dimension of energy and v0, the strength of this Yukawa, if it should satisfy a relationship of this sort, then the, the Born approximation and the result we found in accordance with that approximation is valid and correct. If this condition is not satisfied, then you cannot carry out this approximation. Okay, that is the first criterion for in the low energy limit. And we should, of course, to be, if we have to really claim that this is a good approximation, and we have to check it under the high energy limit. Under what circumstances it is valid in the high energy limit? B, high energy regime. In the high energy regime, <coughs> we have to uh, make the following observation. Notice that k is related to the energy, right? E equals h bar squared k squared over 2m. When energy is very high, k is very high, then this period is 1 over k in R, the, in the R. So it oscillates very rapidly and it averages out to 0. e to the i k r prime oscillates very rapidly. And thus, its average is 0. If that term goes away, what is the integral then? The integral is 0 to infinity, the r prime e to the minus, well, let's drop the primes. It is the dummy integration space anyway, but it's primed or unprimed, doesn't matter. Mu r divided by r. So it is this integral. Everything else are the constants and everything out there. We know what they are. How do we do carry out this integral? Obviously, both limits are dangerous. Due to the presence of R, this limit is dangerous. So we have to find a regularization prescription to replace the lower limit. 
what is a good small number that we can replace the zero with? Zero is, as k is very high, we can replace that with one over k, right? K is good, uh, high energy means k high, then one over k is a small, good small number. And then we write it as one over k and then we take the limit at the end of the day. So I replace this with one over k. You see this regularization businesses are becoming even uh, relevant at this simple level of our class, right? Not in the quantum field theory, obviously, there you need that, but here even quantum mechanical level you need that. So what is the other, other uh, dangerous points? Infinity. What is a large, what is a large uh, number? Mu is obviously a small quantity, right? As compared to the energies in question. It's the rest mass of, say, of the pion. So I can think of replacing this with one over mu and then uh, taking uh, in the high energy limits, all the masses are small. At the low energy limit, it's the rest masses which uh, decides on the scale. At high energy limit, all the rest masses can be ignored, neglected. So I replaced it with one over mu. Then I write the result down. Once the, this regularization is taken into account, then the relevant limit is 2m. The entire thing is what? Two m over h, two m over h bar square. Two pi to the minus three halves there. Times. I'm not giving you the intermediate detail because this is a bit beyond the level of this class. Those of you who are interested can finish this computation. Those of you who are not interested, forget this. V zero over mu k logarithm of k divided by mu is less times 2 pi times 2 pi to the minus 3 halves should be less than 1. Okay, hint. We are in the high energy limit. We have, the, we said that all the rest masses are considered very small in the high energy limit. Therefore, mu is small. You approximate this as one minus mu r. Then the first term is one over r. That's a, a singular integral. But you have regular, regularized the lo, lower limits. It gives you a certain value, logarithm, right? The r over r is the logarithm. And the upper limit is just a constant, right? The R cancels R, and it, it, there is a linear term, we drop it, so. Indeed, you get. But try to reproduce this if you feel powerful, or not forget this, because this is a little beyond your level, obviously. But you see, life is not that trivial. You are you carrying out Born approximation. When you try to justify it, you cannot easily justify it. You just sort of feel that you have to have imposed some constraints on the strength of the V0. In the lower, lower, low energy limit, it was easy. Then you say that this V0 and the mu, which enters into the potential, should satisfy a relation of this sort, and the mass of the particle also come in. Mass of the projectile, strength of the potential, and the mass parameter of potential all intermingle then should satisfy a, pro a property of that sort or else that doesn't work. Okay. So let me move to higher order approximations now. <coughs> As I said, a born approximation when you are carrying it out use it and then justify it. If you cannot justify, don't use it, although you may, you may not wish to. If you are not going to use it in your research, forget this, this comment is not relevant for you. Now let me go to this more rigorous, more systematic discussion of the higher order approximations. Fine. 
Let us remember the form of the Lipman-Schwinger approximation. Okay, this is the title, higher order approximations. Now, what was the Lipman-Schwinger equation with the correct sign? It is this one, the incoming free particle solution, one over E minus H0 plus now I epsilon, that's decided already V sine plus. <coughs> now I will introduce a notation. I will define V psi plus T phi. Well, that sounds like a simple mathematical notation if you don't really get into the background of it. So the action of our full solution by the V, if it could be imitated by the action of an, a more general operator T on the plane wave solution. Let's see what it buys for us. In order to see what it buys for us, let's take this is original Lipman-Schwinger equation, exact, it's fully rigorous. Multiply this by V, what do I get, let's see. V on psi plus is equal to T, V on phi plus V, 1 over E minus H0 plus I epsilon V psi. You see there is this additional V uh, appearing everywhere in the first equation. Then I use this definition. V psi plus is T phi. And here I have the same T phi. What I have achieved is I have eliminated any trace of psi, the full solution, the equation is reduced to an equation involving the plane by free particle solutions, but now T appeared. It is the states which was giving us the information, the psi plus state, but here the equation has been converted into an equation involving the T itself. What do I mean? I mean the following. Let me rewrite it and you'll see it. Let me rewrite this equation. T minus V minus V 1 over E minus H0 plus I epsilon. I can rewrite this equation as such, right? Phi is an arbitrary plane wave solution. Why arbitrary? P is arbitrary. P can have any value. So when you think of the momentum against states for arbitrary values of momentum, this is an arbitrary plane wave solution. If it is arbitrary plane wave solution, then the only way this equation is satisfied is to set this equal to zero. Yes. Nerede atladık? Bir T atladı. T'yi atladım değil mi? Tabii canım. Tabii T. Yani oraya yazıp da buraya atlamak pek ayıp bir şey tabii. Okay, so we have this equation. T equals B plus V E minus H0 plus I epsilon T. So it indeed, it, it became an equation involving T. In the original Lippmann-Schwinger, it was the psi plus state, which was the full state describing the entire scattering process, the in with the incoming and outgoing and scattering and everything. Now, because of the presence of the, this full solution by both sides, now it has disappeared, it's a T which is appearing. 
So if we can determine the, the, the well, obviously this new equation is, a, is sort of an operator integral equation, we should be able to find t. But the question is, what is the t? What is the physical meaning of the t? Question, what is the physical meaning of t? If we can identify the physical meaning of the t, then it makes sense to, to solve this equation, right? For that, we have to go back to that one of the alternative definition along the way we have given for the scattering amplitude. Obviously, everything is to be reduced to the scattering amplitude because if you know the scattering amplitude, you know the physics. You can compute the differential cross-section and almost anything you want to know about the scattering problem. So, for that, let me remind myself, myself again if I can. Okay, F was, the full F was, minus 2m over h bar squared, 2 pi cubed divided by 4 pi, k prime v psi plus. This was, this we have demonstrated to be an expression for the scattering amplitude. All of a sudden, we see that this is so ready to be used for our purposes. Why? Because we have introduced the T operator as V acting on psi plus giving you T times the phi. Phi, the initial phi, right? This is the initial, the full, not the scattered or anything. So it must be the K. Not the K prime, the K. Uh -huh. Then T is so interesting and rich in meaning that if you know the T by taking its matrix element between K and K prime initial and final free particle solutions, then you know the scattering amplitude fully, not even approximately to all orders you want. So T is a very powerful expression indeed. I don't want to do cancellations, that sounds strange. We are going to see that they are going to disappear. So this is the F, to all orders. Once this is the F to all orders, now I can think of attempting to solve that integral equation for the T itself, and we'll see that we can have a perturbative expression for the scattering amplitude. Okay. So I, let me turn my attention to that equation. Notice that that equation is obtained from the lipman schrodinger by multiplying both sides by V. This contains one more V than the original form. Here, there is a case of no scattering. When there is no V, this is equal to phi. It goes through no scattering. Here, there is at least one scattering. This always applies to the scattering. There is no going through freely, untouched, no. Because right-hand side, the lowest order, you replace this with nothing. Zero, t equals v. One more v. So if I would like to solve this integral equation recursively, solve the t integral equation, recursively. What do I mean? Lowest order. Is what? Lowest order is t equals v, right? There is no, no action of v in here. There is t equals v, t is zero. The first order, well, next order. I don't want to call it lowest order, it's first order, really. Okay, next order. 
next order, T1 is V plus V1 over, I will use a shorthand for this operator. Let's define it as the del, mimicking the propagator, really. Del is a good notation for the propagator. So, T0, you see? You take the T0 lowest, lowest order solution and feedback to get the first. So what is this then? V plus V delta V. Now what is the next, again, next to this? I have difficulty in the terminology because I don't want to call it zero, first, or second. It's actually first, second, and third in order. So next order. is T2 V plus V delta T1 now, right? Because this is second order. You feed in the first order, you get the second order. So V, V delta V, V delta, V delta V. It goes on like that. You can write it at the all the way to infinity. Notice that zeroth order contains one v, as, as mentioned before. It is one v. It contains one more v as compared to the Lippmann-Schwinger. Lowest order contains one v. Second order, next order, second order contains two v. v acts once plus twice. And the third order contain, contains first, uh, second, and third. So it is the, it's the way this is acting on the incoming beam. So this is how the T is, T operator is. So let's convert this into information about the scattering amplitude. If we are going to sandwich the T between the K and K prime, initial and final plane free particle solutions, then we'll get the F to all order. F is 2M over H bar squared, 2 pi cube divided by 4 pi, K prime, V, V del V, V del v del v that's the way it's going all the terms are in here so let me write it simply minus 2m over h bar squared 2 pi cube divided by 4 pi k prime v k is the lowest and next is k prime v delta v k and so on all the way to infinity what is the lowest one in here lowest one is the first term if I go one more v acts once, that there is scattering, there should be an action of the v. And the next one is uh, v act not only once, it acts a second time twice, because there are the two v's in here, and so on. So if I write f as a power series expansion, I see F1 as, sorry, I, I correct myself. It's not a power series expansion. It's an expansion in, in the number of V. It's a perturbative expansion. F1 is what? F1 is minus 2M over H bar squared, 2 pi cube divided by 4 pi K prime V K. F2 itself is that second term, etc. 
It's obvious. Let me write the F2, and then we are not going to push any further. 2m over h bar squared, 2 pi cubed divided by 4 pi, k prime, v. Now I'm going to write what that delta I define is. 1 over e minus h0 plus i epsilon times v and k and all the rest involving other things. v delta v delta v. Do you recognize the first term? Well, it's the Born approximation, the, the so-called Born approximation we have seen before. So in this rigorous notation, it's the lowest or the first Born approximation. And the second is the second Born approximation. Third is third Born approximation. Let me indeed demonstrate that it's the expression that we have seen before. So let me write the F1 to show you that it's indeed the F sub B that we have introduced before. What do you do? Here insert identities. You insert identities. Completeness sum involving the position operator eigenvectors. So, minus 2m over h bar squared, 2 pi cube divided by 4 pi, d cube x, d cube x prime, those insertions of completeness sums, k prime, x prime is the first one, x prime, v x is the second, x and k is the last factor, so after the insertions. Conjugate of the free moment, uh, the momentum eigenstate k prime, momentum eigenstate k. So what do I have? Minus 2m over h bar squared, 2 pi cube over 4 pi, Normalization of these are 2 pi to the minus 3 halves, this one and that one. So it is 2 pi to the minus 3. d cube x, d cube x prime, e to the i k x minus e to the i k prime x prime, the exponentials. And this one is v of x delta cube x minus x prime. So you carry out the, uh, first of all, those go away. That's the reason why I was keeping them without doing simple simplifications. So just carry out the x prime integration and you have minus 2m over h bar squared 1 over 4 pi times d cube x times e to the i k minus k prime dotted into x times v of x. Isn't this what we had as fb before? Born approximation, indeed the free integral transform of the potential itself. This is what we have called fb before. So you see how powerful this, uh, this theorem is now. I have the full f to first order Born approximation, to second order. If I say to second order, I have to compute f1 and f2 and sum. To third order, I have to sum all the three n. I have to compute all the three n the sum. But each one are the individual first, second, third Born approximations. To first order, this is only the term. To second order, it is this. To third order, it is this. But you know how to compute. Formally easy. If you want to try on your own, in your free time, to compute this thing for the Yukawa. <laughs> it's tough. Why tough? Because you in introduce a completeness sum a completeness sum, you get the g, x single prime, x double prime. So the, 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 the figure associated with this, the figure associated with this is the following. This is the 
inter integration region. Those of you who are familiar with Feynman diagrams, you may feel a bit of that. What about this one? Here is the integration region. It enters, it propagates, it comes out. What is this propagation? This is x1 and x2. That's gx1 minus x2. g is e to the ik x mod divided by x mod, 1 over 4 pi. So it is this, it hits twice. And in the other one, it's hit, the, the third one, it hits three times. So the actual amplitude is the sum of this one and that one, if you are looking for the second order, up to second order. If it is a lowest born approximation and you know that V is weak, all these are neglected, it's F1 directly, or F, what do you call it, FB before. It is the Fourier integral transform of the potential. You know the potential. And if you compute the free integral transform, which is mathematically trivial, and then you get just taking the mod of it, you get the differential cross section. This last part was a bit heavy, I know, and it, a bit fast. But if you really think of it on your own, both the justification of the Born approximation and this higher order approximation, straightforward mathematically. So I invite you a little bit of private work on your side to really have it absorbed fully. And I, don't want, I want to stop in here for the scattering, because scattering is a huge subject. There are so many things that we can think of doing, but we have to move fast and go to, go to Dirac relativistic quantum mechanics rather fast, so I stop in here. And next week, we are going to start the relative to quantum mechanics.